Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. So you've only got one A-level exam left to go for biology and in this video I'm going to be talking you through the AQA essay. Some top tips to make sure that you can get as high a mark as possible because let's face it it's worth almost 10% of your grade so it's really important that you know these top tips. So let's get straight into it and start with the facts. The AQA essay is worth 25 marks which is almost 10% of your grade so it is incredibly important that you are practicing, preparing to make sure you can get the best mark possible. Now I'm going through some top tips today, but if you need more help than that, then definitely check out my biology essay bootcamp, which gives you everything you need to know to really ace that essay, including a model essay beyond the spec examples, paragraphs that you can apply to almost any essay title and so much more. So I'll link that below. Fact number two is AQA say you should spend 40 to 45 minutes writing the essay. And this is so important. Do not cut down that time because because you need to have at least four relevant topics in plenty of detail and if you don't you can't get above 15 marks so it's essential that you use all of that time and fact number three is you get a choice of two titles so make sure that you are going straight to the back checking those two titles and then deciding which one works best for you and then go and do the rest of the questions because your brain will be subconsciously thinking through relevant topics for that essay while you do the questions and that will mean you'll be so much faster at the end writing it and it'll be a better quality essay. Okay, so that's the key facts. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking more about what are the mistakes people keep making and how we can correct them. If you want to know the ins and outs of how to write the essay, how to write beyond the spec and some example essays that potentially might come up, then you wanna check out the other essays in my essay playlist, which I'll link up here if you want to actually learn more about writing the essay. But this one I'm going through, why is it that the average mark for the essay is normally between 12 and 15 out of 25. So we're talking about half marks. That is the average score for the essay. And I've gone through exactly why that is the case. And I'm going to share it with you to make sure that you don't make those mistakes and you get right up there in the top band. Okay, so let's take a look. Here is the list of the common mistakes that students make, which is why they don't get above 12 to 15 marks. And I want you to have a think, how many of these mistakes have you made or are you making? And let me know in the comments. Let's see which ones people are making. Making. I'm pretty sure I can guess which ones are the most common, but let's take a look. Number one is writing an introduction and conclusion. Number two is linking paragraphs together. Number three, not including enough A-level language. Four, not linking to the importance of or the theme of the question. Number five is being irrelevant or not concise enough. And number six, not having four topics. So those are the main reasons, but let me just give you a bit of a debrief about each of them, what the issue is, and how to make sure that you don't make that mistake to get you top marks. So number one, you do not need an introduction or a conclusion, which I know feels weird, especially if you write for English or history essays and you're used to that. But every year, the examiner's report says you do not need them. It's a waste of your time. They do not get marks. They don't count your marks at all. So please don't waste your time. Jump straight into the first paragraph. Even if that feels weird to you, that is what they want. Number two is linking paragraphs together. And I've said this one so many times and I know people don't believe me, which is why I've got this email from AQA to prove it to you. So let's take a look. So the common misconception is that in the mark scheme where it says you have to have interrelated paragraphs, people are sometimes taught that that means if you've just written a paragraph about enzymes, the next paragraph, you have to find some sort of connection from enzymes to the next topic so that they link together. That is not what that bit of the spec means. Not even in the top band for the full marks, that is not what it means. And as you can see from this email from AQA, they've said that the way that I'm teaching it, where interrelated means linking to the theme of the question, you do not have to link it to the paragraphs, that is correct. So please do not make this harder than it needs to be for yourself. Make sure you are just linking each paragraph to the theme of the question. You don't have to find connections between the paragraphs. They can be complete separate entities. So that's one thing that will hopefully make it much easier for you to plan. Mistake number three. This isn't something that people do deliberately, but to get in the higher band, it says you have to have comprehensive A-level knowledge, well explained. So that means you need to be using A-level key terms, A-level concepts, and you need to be explaining them as well. So make sure that you're not slipping into GCSE knowledge. So let's go through an example 
example with enzymes of what I mean by this. At GCSE, you knew that enzymes were proteins. You knew that they had an active site that was complementary in shape and substrate, and you knew that those could combine together to form an enzyme substrate complex, lowering the activation energy to speed up the rate of reaction. So that is all GCSE knowledge, not A-level knowledge. To turn that concept into an A-level answer where it's comprehensively explained, you need to be thinking about the tertiary structure of that protein, the enzyme, thinking about the location of the bonds, providing that unique shaped active site. And then you'd need to be explaining the induced fit model for how that results in a lowered activation energy, because that then brings it up from GCSE to A-level standard. Now, the best way to make sure that you are not slipping into GCSE knowledge is picking topics to write about that you didn't know at GCSE. So things like the gas exchange in insects, you didn't know that at GCSE, so there's no way you could slip into GCSE knowledge knowledge. But even with that example, you still need to make sure you're including the key terms and explaining them. Number four is linking to importance or the theme of the question. So the importance of part I'm going to address first. Every paragraph, you should have your AO1, which is where you're describing the process or the molecule, whatever the title happens to be about. So if you think about cycles last year and you went for the cardiac cycle, your AO1 would be describing the cardiac cycle. Your AO2 is where you now have to link it to the theme where you have to explain why the cardiac cycle is important. So for that one, you could be linking it to the fact that it enables you to have oxygenated blood being pumped around the body at high pressure and linking that to the fact that you get oxygen for aerobic respiration. And that means that you can produce ATP for metabolic processes. Now that's a very condensed short version, but it's just to demonstrate that when we say the importance of, you need to be explaining exactly why that process or molecule is important. And that shouldn't just be a single sentence. It needs to be at least a third of the entire paragraph. And that's one of the common mistakes people make. And if you do make that mistake, you can't get above 15. So you have to make sure you are explaining fully the importance. Now, I also said number four is linking to the theme of the question. And for this one, it's if you aren't referring back to the title enough. So in the past, there's been essays on the importance of membranes. So within your paragraph, you should be saying the word membrane multiple times and keep focusing about what is the membrane in this process? What was the role of the membrane in this process? Why was that membrane important? So keep linking it to the theme of the question and that will help make sure that you're being concise and relevant, which takes me on to point number five, making sure you're not irrelevant and making sure you're being concise enough. So irrelevant, you might not realize that because you might have thought you've picked a relevant topic but you haven't. The best way to overcome that is to practice. Do lots of plans and then check the mark schemes to check, did you come up with a topic that counted as relevant? If you did see a black tail going in front of the camera a few times, this is the culprit. B apparently absolutely loves the idea of biology essays. Isn't that right, BB, you weirdo? Okay, let's put her over here. Being concise enough for this one, make sure that you are linking it to the theme of the question. So if the theme of the question is about membranes, keep talking about membranes and membranes in whatever process you're thinking about. If you're thinking about concentration gradients in your title, you should be referring to the concentration gradients and why that is important. So the best way to keep concise is look back at the title and make sure everything you're writing is focused on that point. Mistake number four is not having four topics. And I doubt anyone plans to only write three, but it might be you ran out of time or it might be that you wrote one that was irrelevant. So you now only have three. So AQA do recommend that you write five paragraphs just in case one of the ones that you write is irrelevant. That would mean you still have four relevant topics and that would mean you could get as high as 20 marks still. So if you find that you can write quite quickly, then maybe write five just in case. If you know you are always pushed for time and you don't struggle with being relevant, I personally think you'd probably be better off writing four decent paragraphs in enough detail. Because if you write five and they're all relevant, but they're all lacking in detail, you're probably gonna get around 16, 17 marks, maybe even lower. Whereas if you wrote four paragraphs that were all relevant and you have them in enough detail, you'll probably get around 20. It's about working out what your strengths and weaknesses are, whether you decide to go for four or five. 
Now, if you need help knowing exactly how to get 20 to 25 marks, and I recommend you watch this video next where I actually explain the mark scheme to you. And if you want even more help because you are really serious about making sure you get that A or A star, and you know that getting a high mark in the essay is gonna secure that for you, then definitely check out my biology essay bootcamp, which is linked below. But for now, best of luck with your essay practice, and fingers crossed we get two titles that are really good and that we like. And come back for my second video this week where I'm gonna do my final essential tips for paper three. But for now, best of luck with your revision.